Hi, my name is Paul Rountree, and I'm just going to give a short tutorial about a uh, gadget that's used for changing the working ends of a vector in the Vectric programs. Uh, this comes up more and more if you're using vectors to make three-dimensional shapes in solids using fluting toolpaths. And something that happens with this is that if you edit vectors, quite often the start point of the vector will change when you make the edit, or perhaps you've brought in the vectors from another drawing program which didn't control the start points and end points very well. Or maybe you just have to flip all of the end points uh, of a design you've got for whatever you're doing. All of these cases are easily handled if you only have one or two vectors, but if you have a thousand vectors or two thousand vectors, it gets very, very difficult uh, to work on this conveniently. So the, the problem is shown in this example on the screen where you've got a fluting tool path that's setting out a three-dimensional shape. And in the 1,000 vectors that are on the, the pattern, there are nine that cause a problem because they're oriented the wrong way. How do you find them? How do you flip them? So in this case, uh, what we're going to do is just make them all aligned in the same way, and that's the objective. So the gadget works in a very easy way, but it's, it's hard to say coherently. What it does is it decides how far the start and end points are from a reference point, and that reference point is the center of the bounding box that you've used to select the vectors. Then it takes the majority group, the group that it has the start or the end, closest to that reference point, and it flips them the other way around. And that's how the gadget works, and that's how it figures out what it's doing. There's no dialog box to run from. So here's an example. Let's say you've created a bunch of vectors that are all radially distributed here, and somehow the ends have gotten messed up. You want to make them all pointing in or pointing out with the start vector. If you select that group of vectors, you'll find that the reference point is in the middle. And so now when you run the end, if you look at this, most of the start points are closer to the middle than the outside. So the, this is the majority group. When you run the gadget, it takes the majority and flips them. And so now all of the start points are pushed to the outside of the pattern. If that's not what you wanted, if you want all of the start points to be inside, all you do is rerun the gadget. So now when it takes this as the starting point, it finds that the majority of vectors have their start points far away. So it flips that so now all of the vectors have their starting points close in. So that's the whole idea. It works with any number of vectors. If you're looking at something that's not symmetric about the point, it gets a little bit more cumbersome. You have to think about it a little more. So here's a set of vectors that are arranged somehow with a copy tool. Again, somehow uh, some number have been messed up. If you just draw the selection box, the middle of that, the reference point, is not closer to the left or the right for all of the vectors. So if you want all of the starting points on the left or the right, you're not going to get a clean description as is. So the trick is to add another vector off to one side. It could be off to the top, it could be off to the bottom, or it could be in a corner. It doesn't really matter. Now when you draw the bounding box for this whole thing, the center of the bounding box, the reference point, is now over here. And now the dif difference between the starting or the left and the right sides is really clear to see. So this is the way we're going to run it. On this one, you can see that the majority of the vectors have their starting points closest to the middle. That includes this fellow. And so when you select it and run the gadget, the majority is going to be flipped. So now all of the vectors have their starting point farthest from the reference point. If that's not what you were after, then run the gadget again using this as the start configuration and now the majority is far away at the beginning at th after the gadget all of them are closest to the reference point so that's all there is to it to get some real examples there's a program or the uh, a CRV file called green squares sandbox with three examples of how to use this gadget to flip things about in the top left all of these vectors are set up so that the starting point is set to the outside of the circle. Well, what if you didn't want that? What if that's not the way you wanted to, to lay it out? Well, the solution is to select all of the vectors. You can click it to see. The reference point is in the middle. Now I run the gadget. And it tells me what it's done. All of the starting points are now flipped in to be the closest 
to the bounding box center. And I can check that by looking at the node editing, and now the green boxes are all on the inside. Okay. And if that was a mistake, you can just reverse the whole thing again. And it's flipped them around again. Now they're on the outside. Okay. Let's take a, a bit more difficult example. On this pattern on the right hand side, you can see that in these big sections, the vectors are all set up with the starting point on the outside of the pattern. But on these wedges that have been removed or pulled out, the starting points are all on the inside. And let's say you wanted that to be all the same. Well, we're going to select that whole group, click it. The reference point is really well defined for all of them. You run the gadget. And it tells you now that all of the start points are closest to the middle. And sure enough, all of them have been set. Now in this case, it was pretty easy to see that the little wedges are the ones that had the start points reversed. But what happens if you have a thousand vectors and five of them are hiding in there with the wrong orientation? That's really hard to find. So this way, you just flip them all one way or the other, and you can get it organized the way you want. If you look down to the bottom example, it's a little bit more difficult now. Because as I said before, if you select these vectors, the starting point in the dead center, it's not obvious whether that's closest to the left or the right side or how you want to set it up. So what we're going to do is include, oh, and just to show, Some of the vectors have the starting point on the right, some on the left, others on the right again. So there's a whole mix of these things. And that's not what we want. We want them all aligned the same way for this example. So I'm going to select all of the vectors, show the bounding box, and now the center of the bounding box is clearly closer to the right-hand side. I run the gadget. It tells me now all of the starting points are now closest to the right hand to the reference point. So the starting points should all be here. And you can check that. And sure enough, all of them are lined up on the right no matter where you pick them. If that's not what you wanted, we can pick them all again and flip them. And so now all of the reference points, the starting points rather, are all aligned arrive on the left hand side. So that's all there is to this gadget. It's really simple. I don't think that many people will need it very often, but if you do need it, you need it badly. So there it is. Take care.